All right, we're jumping right back to basics today, to the very first chapter of a text that's basically the bedrock of internal medicine, Harrison's. We're going to do a high-yield review of the core philosophy of what it means to practice medicine, pulling directly from the source that shaped generations of doctors. So, here's our game plan. We're going to start with the philosophy, you know, the heart of medicine, then we'll get into the specific roles we all play. After that, we'll cover the skills and tools we need, and wrap it all up with what it really means to be a modern clinician. Let's get into it. First up, we're going to tackle this central idea that really underpins everything we do in clinical practice. It's this concept that balances two incredibly powerful and totally essential forces. Ah, This is the age-old question, isn't it? Are you a scientist, applying hard data from randomized controlled trials? Or are you an artist, using intuition and human connection to navigate all the gray areas? Well, Harrison's argues that this is a false choice. The real practice of medicine isn't about picking a side. It's about mastering the seamless integration of both. And really, this is what it all comes down to. That rigorous science and that compassionate art are both pointed at one single profound mission. Every lab test you order, every evidence-based guideline you follow, and every tough conversation you have at the bedside, it all serves this one purpose. This is the moral compass of our profession. Okay, so with that philosophy in mind, let's look at how it gets tailored to clinicians at every single stage of their careers, from the first day of med school all the way to being a seasoned specialist. You know, what's really cool about this table is how it shows that a foundational text like this isn't some static book you read once. It actually evolves with you. It starts as your map, then becomes your trusted toolkit, and finally, your lifelong companion in practice. Its purpose literally grows as you do. So for the undergraduate learner, the med student, it's all about orientation. It's about building that foundational framework, really getting that blend of science and art into your DNA, and basically setting the coordinates for the rest of your career. Then you become a postgraduate trainee, a resident or a fellow, and the mission gets way more immediate, right? The textbook transforms. It's now your go-to, high-yield source for making those critical patient care decisions every single day, and of course, for crushing your board exams. It's all about direct, evidence-based application right now. And finally, for the practicing clinician or subspecialist, it takes on yet another role. It becomes a crucial point of care reference. It's that quick, reliable guide you turn to when you're managing a complex case or just want to validate a decision, fulfilling that absolute mandate of continuous, lifelong learning. Now let's shift gears a bit and focus on a huge pillar of the art of medicine. We're not talking about drugs or procedures here. We're talking about the one skill that can truly make or break everything communication. This table really lays it out. When you're dealing with a complex case, picking up the phone and talking to another physician isn't just a nice thing to do, it's a critical safety step. We've all seen what happens when patients get conflicting messages from different providers. It creates confusion and kills adherence. That's why consistency is king. And ultimately, it's on us to take all that complex info and distill it into a plan the patient can actually understand and follow. That's the foundation of any good therapeutic alliance. And this quote just says it all, doesn't it? The electronic health record is an amazing repository of data, no question. But it's not a substitute for a thoughtful conversation between colleagues to get on the same page. It can't replace a clear, empathetic explanation to a patient. It's a necessary tool for sure, but it is absolutely not sufficient for excellent patient care. All right, so let's flip to the other side of the coin. We've talked about the art of communication. Now let's get into the science and tech that are just revolutionizing modern practice. So look at this. The modern clinician has this incredibly powerful digital toolkit at their fingertips. Think about it. It's not just a library. It's a real-time clinical dashboard. This fundamentally changes the speed of knowledge translation. A landmark trial can be published on a Monday, and you can be applying its findings at the bedside on Tuesday. You can pull up the latest guidelines in seconds. This just dramatically shrinks the gap between new evidence and actual practice. But here's the most important takeaway, I think. This isn't just about convenience for those of us in big academic centers. It's about equity. This digital access is a total game changer for providers in remote or underserved areas. It closes that information gap that used to create huge disparities in care. It's a global force for standardizing evidence-based medicine no matter where you practice. And that brings us to our final section, which is where we synthesize everything we've been talking about, the art, the science, the communication, the tech, into the one core identity that defines a true medical professional. And there it is. The core conviction here is that to be a doctor is to be a perpetual student. The half-life of medical knowledge is shrinking at an insane rate. 
So this commitment to keeping up isn't just some extra chore or a box to check for CME credits, it is the central ethical obligation of our profession. So how does this look in the real world on a busy Tuesday afternoon? It means you're always integrating new evidence with the timeless art of patient care. It means you treat clear communication like a core clinical procedure. It means you're an expert at using digital tools to stay sharp. And underneath it all, you have dedicated yourself to being a relentless, lifelong learner. So I'll end with this question for you to think about. This isn't just philosophy, it's a daily challenge. As the pace of change just keeps accelerating, the real question for every single one of us, every single day, is how are we going to weave that timeless art and that cutting-edge science together for the good of our patients? Thanks so much for tuning in.